Are you wondering if you can make do with your sport shoes for your trek? Then this video is for you. Today we are comparing trekking shoes with sport shoes and by the end of the video you will know which shoe you will need for your trek. I am Swati from India Hikes and you are watching Trek with Swati. Hey guys, I'm at Decathlon in Bangalore and today I have two of their shoes with me. I have their Trek 100 series by Quechua and I have running shoes by Kalenji, both by Decathlon. And I'm going to be comparing these two shoes a little bit to give you an idea of what shoes you need for your Trek. So right off the bat, you can see that these trekking shoes look a lot sturdier. They look more heavy, like they'll protect you and they're more durable too. These running shoes look specifically meant for running and not for very rough use. But we'll get into some details of these shoes to understand them better. So let's first look at the grip on these shoes. Now if you look at the sole of the Trek 100 series, you'll see deep grooves on the sole. These are actually meant to give you good grip on different surfaces. When you're on a trek, you're likely to be trekking on loose mud, loose soil, boulders, maybe snow or ice. So that is where this comes in handy. You'll see that there's a lot of detailing in the sole. This is specifically meant for that grip that you need. In the running shoes, on the other hand, you'll see that the sole does not have very deep grooves. It's a lot flatter. So this is actually meant for flatter terrain where you're running on tarred roads, cement, maybe mud roads. But it's meant for flat terrain and not for very rough use. So look at the grip of the shoe before you're buying it because that's very important for your trek. The second point we'll cover is ankle support. Now you'll see that this Trek 100 shoes has a very good ankle support. It covers almost my entire ankle when I wear it. And that kind of restrains the movement of my ankle. It does not allow my ankle to twist, especially when I'm descending on uneven terrain or even ascending. That's extremely important on a Trek because a twisted ankle can actually end your Trek. Running shoes, on the other hand, do not have ankle support. They end just before your ankle. These are actually meant to give you more flexibility when you're running or walking so that you have that ankle movement that you need during that action. So this is not really going to protect your ankle from twists or anything. It gives you more flexibility. Next, let's take a look at the thickness and the hardness of the sole. If you take the Trek 100 shoes, you'll see that the sole is pretty thick. But how hard is it? For your trek, you don't want something that's too hard, that it's too rigid, that doesn't move with your feet. But you don't want it too soft, that it actually collapses with the weight of body every day. So, test the hardness of the sole. For this, you can just take something like a key and tap the sole and listen for the noise. The sound should not be something that's too shallow, like if you hit football studs you'll hear a very shallow sound. You don't want that when you're doing that with trekking shoes. On the other hand, the running shoes, you'll see that the sole is not as sturdy or thick as the trekking shoes. It is very flexible, but it's not very hard or uh, it's more cushioned. So you can listen to the sound of the running shoes too. You'll see that the sound is a lot more diminished because there's a lot more cushioning in the running shoes. It's not as hard as the trekking shoes. So it's not meant to take your body weight, especially with your backpack and things, for so many days in a row. In fact, if you trek with these shoes for 2-3 days itself, you'll find that the sole is becoming a lot more flatter. That's because of the kind of cushioning used in this sole and in this sole. They're very different. So. Watch out for the sole, for the hardness, the thickness. You'll need the thickness for a long Himalayan trek because it has some padding for insulation and everything. Running shoes will not last you many days on a trek. Next, we'll look at water resistance. This is extremely important on a Himalayan trek because you could be trekking in rain, you could be trekking in snow or even crossing boulders over streams. So. These Trek 100 shoes have a water resistant coating on top where they spray a certain water resistant coating and inside it also has a waterproof membrane. So it will actually last you for many hours while you're trekking in snow or in rain without letting your feet get wet or cold. The running shoes on the other hand, they have no water resistant coating at all. 
nothing to do with water in the shoe so if you even step in a puddle or a pothole more likely it is going to get wet and that's not going to be very helpful on a trek so look out for these four points that is the grip on the sole the ankle support the hardness and thickness of the sole and also the water resistance these four points are very important for your trek you need these on a long himalayan trek now there are a few additional points that a few people might point out number 1 is that these trekking shoes are a lot heavier and that is true this one weighs around 500 grams and together they do weigh around a kilo but you will get used to it after you using it for at least 2 3 days you do need that weight when you're going on a long himalayan trek because you do have your backpack on your back so these shoes actually stand that weight The next thing is that they do have a longer break in period. It's not as easy to just slip on uh, this shoe like it is for this shoe. You can just wear this and go running the same day, but you cannot wear this and go trekking the same day. You'll need at least 2 weeks to break into these shoes, and by breaking in, these shoes are a lot more sturdy, so they actually take time to conform to the shape of your feet and to the movements of your feet. So give these shoes that amount of time, around 2 weeks before your trek is when you actually need to buy them. So make sure you do that. but otherwise think about what your trek is going to have is it going to be a single day hike or is it going to be even a two day hike with camping with neatly laid out trails not very difficult terrain then you can actually probably use running shoes it's not going to be difficult especially on non himalayan treks if you're trekking in the sahyadris or the western ghats or uh, the eastern ghats you could use these but on a long himalayan trek where you're likely to be trekking for 6 7 days on different kinds of terrain different gradients you definitely need a pair of trekking shoes just for your own feet's sake so make sure you invest accordingly and make the right decision if you need help with anything just drop in a comment i'll help you out or i can get some of my friends from decathlon to help you out if you have anything else you want to know just write in an email to trekwithswati@indiahikes.com And we're constantly making more videos like these about trekking, trekking tips, trekking trails. So make sure you hit subscribe to our channel. We'll notify you of our new videos.